All right, you guys, today's finally the day. I kind of already jumped the gun, got the car on jack stands, and started taking everything apart. But today, I've been waiting. I got everything here, so hopefully I didn't miss anything. I made sure I had all the fittings. I had to get some new fittings because I left some on the old car. Had to get new parts, got some new gauges, got the turbo. Got pretty much everything I need to hopefully put this thing back together. So, like I said, I already started taking everything apart. I took the battery out and already off to a horrible start. So, I went to go take this out just to give myself some more room because I got to take out all this other intake stuff. And went to go take it apart. And this is what happened. So, the bolt that you normally would loosen to loosen up this clamp literally just snapped away on the on the battery terminal so I already just ordered a set from Amazon hopefully they'll be here soon I took the negative one off too because it's not looking in the best shape either but this is what happens when you don't clean your battery terminals and the corrosion gets to that copper and it just ate it away and then when I went to go take take it apart it it just broke so I took that off took the windshield wiper shroud off I gave that a good cleaning because it was pretty dirty um, but now it's time to start getting into the other stuff. I'm going to take off the intake side of things. Um, probably take off the bumper. I'm just going to get myself prepped and ready to go. Because the first thing I'm most likely going to do is take off the headers and the exhaust. Get that out of here. So that way we have room to put the turbo in and everything like that. So it's actually kind of funny to um, literally go from a naturally aspirated engine straight to a turbo. I mean... Usually, like, people will have aftermarket stuff on their car already, but this is literally a stock engine, so it does need to get clean. Like, there's lots of stickers, and I mean, I don't know what this came off of, but it's a sticker from a part. Leaves and stuff in here. Um, I'm going to try to give this car a good clean. I have an oil leak somewhere over here. I think it's my oil cap, so I already tried to clean it off just a little bit. Um, but something's leaking over here, and it looks like... It's all, majority of it's around the oil cap and just kind of flowing itself around the engine. So I'm going to have to order a new oil cap soon, but for now it'll stay. It's not a horrible oil leak, but it is leaking oil. So let's get this air intake box out and get ourselves prepped for the turbo. So I'm making progress. I got the most of the intake box out. I have this stuff I gotta try to do, but that has to come out from the bottom. Um, bumper came out pretty good, surprisingly. Looks pretty good, but it's funny because if you guys were watching my detail video, I noticed that bumper was getting pretty bad in the in the middle. And it honestly, I don't. I'm not a body shop person. I don't know body work as much, but that kind of looks like duct tape but I could be wrong but whatever it is easily falling apart and you can see the paint is just flaking right off so this is very common on these bumpers someone hits something they constantly easily just split right down the middle and but that's just funny to see how crappy of a job they did trying to fix that so then I also got this out here I need to clean this so that's why I brought it out in the backyard because I need to spray this down get all this gunk out sometimes it's good to be able to pull off this plastic trim pieces sometimes so you can see all the gunk that sits inside of here and get that out but otherwise it will start to try to rust through that so but let's keep chugging along getting all this stuff off here i am impressed at how clean this car is doesn't look like many people have touched this car yet so that is a good thing i mean once i get farther into it i'll really see but Honestly, all in all, it doesn't look like anything's been touched. I mean, the battery terminals were also, I'm pretty sure they were stock. And that's why after 13 years of corrosion and not cleaning it, they finally just broke. So, but looking over everything, I don't see any oil leaks. The only oil leak I see is on the top right here. 99% sure it's coming from 
here or the the solenoid here but pretty sure it's coming from the oil cap i just changed these out too to the vv to the red solenoids that i had on my last corolla so i just changed it out just to make sure that it's not leaking from there but it didn't look like it was so but i need to get a new oil cap ordered soon but let's keep chugging along get rid of all this stuff that's unnecessary um try to clean this up a little bit try to get these stickers off of here and get all these leaves out of here um and then i'm gonna put some penetrant fluid on those bolts from the headers or the exhaust manifold whatever you want to call it so that way i can try to get those to break loose without any problems but that's the last thing i want to do is break a bolt inside the engine so Got everything off the front that I think I need to. Um, just been trying to clean it up a little bit because everything's pretty dirty down here. So I've been trying to give it a clean. Um, I also cleaned everything over there too because that was also like very muddy kind of. So, but one thing I forgot that these Corollas come with is like the spare like coolant reservoir thing. I don't know. And I swear on my 2009 Corolla, this was a clear one. Now on the 2010, it looked like it was black. I don't know if this has anything to do with the intake system at all. If this is like how it gets muffled into here. I don't know. But it's literally bolted on here. Just like um, the coolant reservoir. But that also has to come off so you have room for your piping as well as your blow off valve and everything. But yeah, everything's going smoothly so far. Except for my positive and negative terminals on the battery. So, But I got those ordered. But now... Let's go start spraying some penetrant fluid on the back here and see if we can get this cover off, I believe. Um, I didn't have to worry about this the last time, but there is a cover, a heat shield. Um, I'm going to try to get that off too, see if we can pull it out from the top. Last time on my other Corolla, it was so rusted I ended up breaking it off. So we'll see how this one is. It looks a lot cleaner. I can actually see the bolts. Before on my last one, there was like <laughs> just a rust blob. All right, so I bought some liquid wrench. I don't know if it's the best, the worst, indifferent, but I'm gonna coat all these back here. All right, so surprisingly, this actually came out in one piece. And it still looks fairly good. So, like I said, my last crawl. I mean, I know, obviously, it really depends on where you live. And from what I was told, this car was only in, like, New Hampshire or something like that for the first two or three years. And then from there, it came to Florida. So, I'm assuming that it didn't see a lot of snow. Because this, like I said, is, like, one of the first things to go. So, now I just soaked the five bolts on the manifold as well as a couple bolts that bolt, bolt the cat downpipe, whatever you want to call it. I didn't realize there's another shield underneath there, so I will have to get that shield off as well. But all in all, so far, so good. This is probably the worst part that I thought. I mean, other than I hate getting under the car and taking the whole exhaust off, but um, other than that, I mean, we'll get this out and we'll start cooking. All right, something else I'm going to do on this car as well, because I don't know if any preventative maintenance have really been done. But um, first off, I just checked to make sure my valve cover is not leaking in the spark plugs. Pulled all the pulled all of the ignition coil packs off, and there's no oil in them, which is a good thing. Um, but I am going to change out the spark plugs as well as regap them, because something I didn't notice is they recommend you. It seems like you put a smaller gap on the spark plugs compared to what factory says when you turbo the car. So I didn't do that last time, but I'm going to do that on this time now. I'm going to be swapping out the spark plugs. I got these NGK um, Iridium spark plugs. I regapped them to about this thickness, which was about 26 thousandths. Um, on turbo kits instructions, they say to 28 thousandths. So I'd say I'm pretty close. I mean, this has had a little bit of slop, so 
I'm pretty close to where they are. And then I'm also going to swap out the fuel injectors to some 550cc injectors. Um, I'm kind of doing this slightly backwards on how I did it last time, but there's really no perfect way to do this. But I figure I'm going to get everything on the top of the engine done first. And then go underneath the car and then get everything else done that way. So hopefully this will go pretty good. Um, I've already loosened up the harness um, on the fuel injectors. So I'm just going to have to pop off a couple bolts as well. As last time I popped off just a couple bolts right on the front. And that gave me a little bit of access. But I'm going to go down here. There's a bolt holding on this solid fuel rail i'm going to try to unbolt that so that way i can move it out of the way even more because last time just trying to get the fuel injectors in there was just kind of a pain to do when you don't have a lot of room so and i ended up pinching one of the o-rings last time i did it so i want to make sure i give myself a little bit more more room to work with so i don't pinch them good so. All right, so I just took the old fuel injectors out. Everything looks good. I just put a rag down just to catch any excess fuel in the fuel rail. But these things are actually like super cruddy and dirty on the connectors and on like all the O-ring surfaces. Um, like one of like you can literally see all the stuff that was like caked on inside of there because that should be like a nice yellow color, but. Now I got my new ones over here, so we should be good to just swap them over, lube up the O-rings on the top, so I don't pinch them like I did last time, but after loosening up that bolt down at the bottom, it gives you a lot more excess room to move this whole fuel rail around. I've tried to clean it up as good as I can so I don't get any dirt inside of there, but it still just seems like there's a lot of little dirt on on some of these things, so. All right, so I'm in the middle of doing the spark plugs. Everything's going pretty good so far. Nothing's stuck in the engine. Um, luckily, but one thing I want to say, if you guys are cheap like me, um, the way I'm doing this is I just got a 14 millimeter deep socket 3 8 because you need to make sure it fits inside these spark plug wall um, tube. So a 3 8 extension, this is a Dura last one I believe from AutoZone or whatever. Um, and then instead of buying the spark plug socket that has like a rubber piece in the middle of it, you could just use your your ignition coil pack to press down on it and then it will pull itself out. So if you guys don't want to spend, I don't know how much a spark plug socket is, like 20, 25 bucks, and you already have a 3.8 deep socket, even if you don't, this is probably like five bucks. So versus 15, 20 bucks for a spark plug socket. So that's the way I'm doing it. Um, but if you do, it's just an easy, cheap way to save some money. It's not like it's taking you any longer either. All right, so I got all four of them out. Um, this one, this was on the first one I took out. It does seem a little foul, like a little black, um, maybe too much fuel, I don't know. All the rest seem pretty normal. So, and then there's a new one. I got NGKs, so should be pretty much like stock, if not a little better. And I regapped these to about 28 thousandths, which Turbo Kits recommends. So I'm gonna throw these back in the car. Now I'm gonna come down here I'm going to cut away all the stuff I need to for the intercooler piping, which is notching out a hole here and then notching out the radiator support so the um, intercooler will sit flush. So I'm going to do that real quick and I'm going to try to use this multi-tool with a metal blade on it. Hopefully it'll trim out pretty nicely. Um, if not, I'll resort to a sawzall and grinder but I got a few of these blades, so hopefully it'll make through what I need to.
cut up. Um, could look a little better, but this metal is so flimsy. Everything just shakes and vibrates so much, but I cut off. They say to cut off about six inches from the bottom. I did about like six and a half inches. So that way your intercooler will fit. And then I cut off um, pretty much all the way up to about the middle of that hole and as far over as I could before the metal got really, really thick. Um, hopefully that'll be enough. And then I found some silver wheel paint. I don't know how good it is, but I, I just shook it up and I sprayed this and just to protect the paint, nothing to look perfect because nobody's ever going to see it, but I found a color that looked fairly similar. So I painted that now. There's a million other things we could do. I think what I might do is try to get the exhaust off now um, and see how well that comes off. I have to drain and I have to drain the oil as well as pop off the oil pan so that way I can drill and tap for a oil drain for the turbo. And then once we get all that done, we're ready to start throwing everything on. All right, so I've been making some slow progress, but making good progress. So. I swapped out my old oil and coolant lines because I ruined them when I was pulling out the turbo on the Corolla. So I got new ones, swapped them over, tightened them pretty good. One thing I can definitely say is if you have any of the, the lube left over from your fuel injectors, it definitely will help slide these fittings on because uh, that's what I was doing. So, but, so I got those swapped over, everything looks good there. And then I made some progress over here. I got pretty much, I loosened, I know the lighting is horrible over here, but I loosened the five bolts holding on the manifold for the exhaust. They all broke loose with no problem. So that was good. Um, it is a little tight space back there. Um, definitely gonna bang your hands if you're not careful. But so now next step is, oh, then I also got the intercooler mounted um, everything should be good on this, on this side of things. So, um, had just enough room here from what I cut. So everything looks good there. And there's just a, some mounting holes that are already on the car that we use for those brackets. Um, but yeah, now we're pretty much ready to take the exhaust off and throw this turbo on there. And then also too, something I bought. I don't know if I should do this while I'm putting the turbo in or not, but I bought some new gauges. Um, I think one of them might be useless to me because, um, so that's an AFR gauge. This is a boost controller from AEM. And then I bought this, not realizing that I believe this tells me my boost pressure, but if not, I have a boost gauge as well. So, but I think this does tell me, I'm not exactly sure, but if I don't need this, I'll most likely just sell it and just use this and this, but I have to look at how to wire one of these up. I've never done it before, so I'll have to try to figure that out, but should be relatively easy. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to try to start taking the exhaust stuff off and then that way we can make room to throw on this. So after a good 20, 30 minutes, finally got the muffler out from under the car. I definitely had a, a good problem trying to get those exhaust hangers off, but after a good finagling, I should probably invest into some exhaust hanger tools, but I got some pliers and a flathead. That wasn't really the biggest problem I had. The biggest problem I had was this bolt holding on the muffler to the exhaust. One bolt came out perfectly fine. The other bolt I was struggling a little with, but 
I thought I had it, and then as soon as I thought I had it, I realized that the welds broke holding on the actual piece on the back. So I had to cut the screw off in order to get that off. So, but honestly, I thought I was doing some pretty good. I thought I was doing good with this exhaust, but then finally I had this bolt get stuck on me. So now all I have to do, I got the header bolts already loosened and taken off. I just got to take off the rest of the exhaust with the mid pipe and the resonator and the cat. And then I'll take off the headers and then we'll be ready to start putting everything back on. Definitely want to say we're making some good progress. I got the entire exhaust out of the car, including the headers. So got this thing out. This took me a little while to get to because I forget that they put these support brackets on here. So don't forget when you loosen these, these are 12 millimeters. Once you loosen these, there's going to be two 14 millimeters farther down that you're going to have to try to get rid of. So, and I took rid of, I got rid of both of these and I left this one on. You could probably do take this one off, pull the headers out and then get this. But I was able to take that whole thing out from the top here. I just made sure I got rid of a few like hoses and stuff that were in the way. But other than that, everything has been taken off. So now it's time to throw that turbo in and get the intercooler piping. All right, so I'm getting the turbo prepped. All the lines are all changed, everything like that. Um, I'm looking at this boost controller, trying to figure out how it's supposed to be wired. And, well, I guess not wired, but how to plumb it. I'm pretty sure I got it plumbed correctly, but I don't have nearly enough line to get this somewhere that's easy to work because right now this would be on the bottom side of things and I'd rather run it like somewhere over here um, so I'd rather like plumb it up this way and then put it somewhere I don't know if there's any good spots to put it on the firewall but somewhere else so that way it's easy to actually manage it and see it and make sure everything's functioning good. I know this one is electronic, so there's nothing that needs to get adjusted on it. So it doesn't need to be somewhere like accessible, but I would rather make it like that. So that way it's just not chilling out in space. So I'm gonna have to go get some new line and that way I can plumb it better. I think there should be enough electrical because um, they give you all this line but they don't give you a lot of extra line for those two wires there so I'm gonna have to try to figure that out too I'd rather get all this figured out before I throw the turbo in there so that way I'm not trying to finagle with everything while it's in the car so I'm going to try to get this situated before I throw in the turbo, but once I get this all done, then we'll be ready to throw in the turbo and get everything else finished. All right, so after looking at some diagrams, I pretty much figured out how to get this wired up, or at least plumbed up. Um, and I got about four feet of tubing, so two feet away from the turbo. Hopefully I can mount it somewhere decent. Otherwise, I'm probably just zip tie it somewhere until I can figure out a more permanent solution but this is how I have it plumbed for an internal wastegate so I have port 3 or yeah port 3 going over to the turbo side then port 2 going over to the wastegate side and then port 3 or port 1 has a little filter on it so now that I got that figured out, I'm gonna I got a new gasket I'm gonna put on there. We'll throw this on, put that on, and then this will kinda land wherever it goes. Hopefully somewhere decent enough where you can get access to it.
All right, so this video ran out a lot longer than I thought it was going to. So I'm gonna make this into two parts so that way they're not as long. So stay tuned for part two.